It is September 17th. It is Monday. It's a brand new week in VR gaming. And of course, tomorrow is a very big day. Tomorrow we do have the release of Transference, which could possibly be the single biggest VR game of September. Maybe not. Maybe not, because Windlands 2 has come out already and it's set a very very high bar. I believe Windlands 2 has set an extremely high bar, but we do have Transference tomorrow. We also have Blind, Blind from Tiny Bull Studios. That is also happening tomorrow as well. So, um, and some other games. There's some other games coming out on the 18th as well. Um, obviously, Unearthing Mars 2 on PlayStation VR and Downward Spiral Aorus Station is also coming out uh, tomorrow as well for PlayStation VR. Okay, so speaking of trailers, I did find a couple of other trailers that I have never seen before. Some new games that are kind of coming down the pipe. And one of them is called Dracaris or something like that. And this guy says the trailer is a bit rough here. And of course, it's going to be a, the wrong resolution, of course. Or maybe this is the right resolution. The other one was wrong. So this is some game called Dracaris or something like that. And the trailer is a little choptacular. Um, Paradise Decay is checking in. The hardest working man in show business. Uh, Chris Gould says, Polish Paul is pretty funny when you get used to him. No, yeah, I'm not trying to talk smack at all. I have much love for Polish Paul. Much respect for anybody that bangs out videos on an incredibly regular basis. Um, but let's check this trailer out just for a minute. This is some game called Dracaris or something like that. I guess you're a dragon. You seem to be flying around as a dragon and just wrecking shop. You're basically going to these little settlements and you're just trying to destroy the shit out of them. I mean, that's based on what I'm seeing right here. I actually have no freaking knowledge of this game whatsoever. But I think it's being developed by pretty much like one dude. There's a ton of games out there that seem to be developed, developed by one, one dude or a couple of dudes. Very indie type stuff. And you just... Sometimes these things turn out to be really good. And sometimes they turn out to be complete and utter ass. We just don't know. So they pause the game. Um, yeah, so this is kind of a rough trailer. But we're just getting an idea of this game called Dracaris or something. That's the other thing. I think people need to start making games that uh, are easier to freaking pronounce. Like, how many games do we have that are not very easy to pronounce? Quite a few, in my opinion. Okay, so yeah, this is that trailer right here. And it does look a bit on the herky and jerky side. Frame rate looks very low. Yeah, and, and <laughs> he like grabbed a horse it's almost like an alien alien abduction simulator because it looks like you can pluck people, like you can pluck horses and giraffes um, and just pluck individual archers, grab them, and then drop them anywhere you want. Of course, you are a dragon. You can eat people. These look like Unity assets, says Crunchy. Yeah, so the trailer, trailer not exactly dripping with production values and polish but hey it's a dragon simulator what more do you want folks all of us want to be dragonborn right well here's your opportunity to be dragon born again so going over here to the web browser so this is the post that i saw this was 17 hours ago Dracaris VR, Be a Dragon, new trailer and demo. And this guy says, I've been working for a while now on my game, recently renamed, he renamed it. So, oh, it was called Dragon's Flight VR, but there was a similar named game already. So he had to drop that. That's too bad because Dragon's Flight VR, like that actually makes logical sense. Dracaris sounds like a freaking bourbon or something. I don't know what Dracaris, Dracaris VR. So that's the new name. He says, please excuse the poor quality trailer. I am very new to video editing. And he's looking for some community feedback and stuff. And so people are talking about him. Uh, I mean, people are talking about this. Some people are talking about the name as well, saying the name's kind of 
kind of uh, sketch. But yeah, so that is just a new game. Keep our eyes on. And I think it's important, you know, this is something that we can do. We can always keep our eyes on some of these really small games that we don't really know what the hell is going on with them. But, you know, we never know because sometimes these things can turn into a really nice thing. Supersonic Station says, those Dragon S assets are from Project Spark. I'm positive. So Supersonic Station is just killing it today with a lot of insights. He also said... LOL, Goat Simulator with a Dragon. And Chris Gold says, why do indie devs do this? I mean, at this stage, when you do not have time to play the good games that are out, who the F is going to put time into this? Yeah, this is one of those questions I've asked as well. And, you know, let's go back to like Whitway Studios, who, who was in chat for a while and has kind of disappeared into the mist. Haven't seen Whitway Studios in a minute, but they have that game People Cubed, right? And I think that dev was going to release that game for like 15 or 19 uh, 20 bucks or something like that. And I just, you know, it's a real catch-22 because I don't want to try to rain on the parade of these indie devs that they're going for their dream. You know, these devs are, they're, they're, every day they're banging away, they're coding out these games, they're putting in a lot of work and a lot of effort and their dream is that if they can make this game and if this game can be halfway decent and if it can get a little bit of hype and if if things work out right maybe this guy can get rich now i don't know that this developer is going to get rich off of dracari's vr and i don't know if whitway studios is going to get rich either off people cubed because they're competing against some really high-end games that are coming out on a regular basis that are a hell of a lot cheaper. Um, Chris Richardson says, they're always someone who has time and an, and an opinion. Yeah, but you need like a thousand, you need at least a thousand people to probably buy your game just to freaking make your money back. Like not even to have profit, but just to make your, your money back. Um, so it's difficult, you know. I, I mean... Much love to these guys. I mean, go for your dreams. Fucking go for your dreams. Like, no no two ways about that. But there just isn't an audience for everybody, man. It's, it's limited. There's another game I heard about. I heard about this on Upload VR, and it is called Breath Tech. I, I know nada about this game. Let's check this out. Hopefully better production values. Well, you know, a slight increase in production values there. Very, very slight. Very, very slight increase in production values with Breath Tech. Solve puzzles using only your breath. And um, interesting. Okay, so Paradise Decay, let's see. He's saying, Anthony, it's just a demo to show other devs the possibilities of using the HMD's mic as a tool. Worth playing for the effects and laughs. Oh, okay, so this is just kind of a demo, not really like a full-blown game. And then Chris Gould says, Talking of indie devs, Furious Seas, which I thought was dead, has a free roaming update. Hooray! And Crunchy says, They go for their dreams, but they, should, but they also should be realistic and not crushed if they fail. Um... Chris Gold says, don't get me wrong, I really appreciate indie devs. Where would we be without them? But some of them need to get real. It's, you know, it, it's just, it's a hard deal, man. It's a hard deal. It really is. Uh, Crunchy says, is this, is this a game or a tech demo? It, apparently, according to Paradise Decay, it sounds a little bit more like a tech demo. But I, found, I heard about this game when I was on Upload VR. This is Upload VR today. They're talking about five Marvel Studio Studios VR experiences we would like to see from the void. 
And what is the deal with like Disney and the Void? Like they seem to really be in bed together. And then Breath Tech is a VR puzzle game that uses your breath. So this was the story that I saw right here. Didn't know too much about it, um, but I just wanted to grab that trailer really quick. Um, breath Tech from indie developer Brett Jackson, known for his 2016 VR adventure Dimensional. This is the guy that made Dimensional. Yeah, I remember Brett Jackson, and I remember Dimensional. I liked Dimensional. He says, I want to encourage other developers to investigate using breath detection and for manufacturers to considering adding low-cost breath sensors in future generation HMDs, Jackson told Upload VR. And, of course, this story is on Upload VR, so... Be sure to bounce over there on occasion and give them a little bit of that patronage. Uh, could this be the first step to seeing better breath detection technology integrated into future VR headsets? Well, I mean, let's face it. We want eye tracking. We want foveated rendering. We want a larger FOV. We want higher resolution HMDs. But what we really want are breath sensors. That is like next level type shit right there if we can sense our breath there are so many things we can do that would just be sensational i don't know i don't know if this breath stuff really is that big of a deal but hey it's cool and i did like his game dimensional um i enjoy dimensional i wonder if anybody else in chat has ever played dimensional because i thought that was pretty cool um let me lower down this volume here a bit and so SAMIK81 says breathing should be in every first person VR game. It is very immersive. Chris Gould says a horror game with breath detection would be pretty cool. Yeah, all we need is people passing out because they're really trying to, to uh, control their breathing and, um, you know, they're, they're trying to get on the leaderboards. Supersonic Station says VR should use that mic more for games like London Heist when you smoke the cigar and blow the smoke out. That was actually really cool. All I got to say is thank God, <laughs> thank God I don't need any of these freaking crap. You know, thank God I don't need any of this stuff. Although this does look kind of cool, but I bet you it's expensive as hell. But it does look kind of cool. And there, there definitely are people out there. An Annabelle Lecter simulator. That is a good one. T-Dub. Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, it definitely is. Clarice. Clarice. Uh, it definitely is a Hannibal Lecter simulator. You are kind of wheeled out there like that. But, you know, the truth of the matter is, we do actually have a lot of people that they just get queasy, man. They get queasy in VR. Or maybe they psych themselves out that they're going to get dizzy. Um, you know, and, and so it's, it's something you can do, you know? So, I mean, companies are working on this Cambrian, um, VR made easy. So this chair here, I mean, I don't know what like the Kickstarter is. Terry Blanchard says over-engineered and pre-Cambrian. And this is Winlands. You can see they're playing Winlands here and just kind of leaning forward, leaning back, I guess, or maybe using your, uh, you're using your joystick and then you just kind of tilt and move. So, I mean, you know, an interesting idea. Is it really a, uh, is this a problem that we really need solved? Is there that huge of an audience that would want to buy this? But, um, you know, it's good to have these products. Push the Button is in the building. What's up? Push the Button. Haven't seen you in a while. Uh, Chris Richardson says this limits gunplay to pancake aiming. Yeah, it certainly would. Uh, they can, you can see they're, they're uh, showing you some, serious sam footage there as well because but. we do have some breaking news breaking news in road to vr the puzzle adventure twilight path is going to arrive next month on rift and vive this of course is coming to us from the studio that brought us form we are talking about charm games and yeah twilight path is a game that we had been following here and it's arriving on october 2nd Charm Games, you're making a huge mistake, man. That's Astrobot Day. You don't want to come out the same day as Astrobot, but you know, Charm Games, they did make Form, which is highly celebrated puzzle game, and Twilight Path will be coming on the 2nd of October. There's no kind of word 
on the gameplay length, but apparently it's going to be priced at 15 bucks, which is exactly the same as form. And if there was any kind of, um, if people were upset in regards to form, they were, they were just upset that, the, that it was so short. That's what they were upset about. You know, everybody seemed to really like form, but it was just the shortness of the game that seemed to bother people. Um, but let's see. Um, I know I have a, oh, I have some Twilight Path trailers. So let's go ahead and throw a Twilight Path trailer on. Let's celebrate the October 2nd release date. So another game, another game getting its date out there. Creators of Form. I have played Form. It is quite awesome. I've even sampled Twilight Path and was enjoying myself in that. Um, and then I got slammed by a whole bunch of games and we didn't have a release date for Twilight Path, so I didn't play it too much. But I've actually played an early build of this and it did play quite nicely. Um, Paul Smith says, off topic, but can't find Transference demo on PlayStation Store. Am I missing something? You might want to look for the Walter test case. Maybe they put it in a different place, or maybe because the real game is coming out tomorrow, they took it off of there. Not sure. Um, but yeah, so Twilight Path will be arriving on October 2nd. That is the same day as Astrobot. And, you know, <laughs> the VR... VR games just continue to onslaught us with so many VR games because we're getting like Zero Killed in late September, we're getting Jet Island in late September, we're getting Creed in late September, and then very, very early in October, we're going to get Astrobot and we're going to get Twilight Pass. So just a lot of games are coming out, um, which is going to make things kind of hard for some of these developers because everybody can't buy every game. We have to pick and choose a little bit. But yeah, Martino Movie says Form was awesome. And I am inclined to agree. Form was absolutely quite awesome. Oh, you know, one thing I can show real quick is our boy Noah. Yeah, our boy Noah went to Magic Leap. He got himself a complimentary Magic Leap one. What a lucky devil here. And they made this pin called Do It For Noah, and all the employees were wearing this pin. And then look at that Magic Leap sweatshirt in the background. That is Shanna De Lulis. She Oh, look at her little tattoo on her finger. See her little tattoo on her finger? She definitely loves showing off that tattoo at any and every opportunity. And that is our boy Noah. He does have a brand new Magic Leap 1 headset. I believe he has arrived back in California, so he's back from his trip. I just want that Magic Leap sweatshirt. Although it probably wouldn't fit me, but it might fit my wife. Oh, here's Noah. Noah's in the building. There he is. Yeah, Noah, what is up? Can you wear that sweatshirt, dude? It looks kind of small. Uh, does that sweatshirt fit you? That's my number one question. Um, what other little trinkets and stuff did you get when you were there? But and, and how are you enjoying your um, how are you enjoying your Magic Leap One now that you're back at home? You can use it in your own living room and such. We absolutely have to get Noah on here as a, a featured guest where we can do a live interview with Noah. And that's something I need to figure out. It's on me, folks. It really is on me. And Tesserum says, that's a good spot to have a mustache tattoo. Well, yeah, Shana De, Shana De Lillis, she was, of course, in that one video introducing the Magic Leap 1. And she was like putting the thing on her belt and putting the headset on. She kind of had an interesting hairstyle going on. Noah says, I got all sorts of stuff. It's amazing. I love it. Well, absolutely. You should love it. And, it, you know, it's awesome. It's a dream come true. And, of course, like always, go ahead and visit the website, vrgamerankings.com. You can check out the website there. And, of course, subscribe to the channel, like the video, all of those kinds of things. And I will see everybody tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time. I will see you guys then. Take it easy. Later.